Church of Washington Hills, the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. We are in the fall quarter, success and failure. Unit one was obedience and success. And unit two is disobedience and failure. And this lesson will end our unit two. In the fall quarter, title of success and failure, the second unit of lesson title, disobedience and failure are showing vastly different results due to faithfulness. This lesson title, Israel Reject God Has Came Ends, the second unit of lesson, whereas Israel showed the utmost disrespect for God by asking for a king, whereas they broke God's heart by rejecting him as Lord and King and demanded a human king. This lesson covers the selection of Saul to be the first human king of Israel. Saul could have been the first in the line of faithful kings within his family. However, his disobedience to God destroyed any future for his family on the throne of Israel. What else could be expected of a flawed king but to fail God, which affected the well-being of Israel? Up to this time, Israel, God has been the supreme leader of Israel. However, after Israel compared themselves to their pagan neighbors, they wanted to be like everyone else and have a king, whereas God permitted them to have what they wanted. However, he knew it was not what they most desperately needed. Our lesson for today is Israel reject God as king, coming from 1 Samuel 9, 1 through the 2nd verse, and then the 10th chapter, the 17th through the 26th verse. And I will go to text read, You have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversity and your tribulation. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. 1 Samuel 10 and the 19th verse. Let us pray. O gracious and almighty God, here's once again that we call upon your holy name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our heart, realizing we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for life as well with us as it is. We thank you for our early rising this morning. Oh, Heavenly Master, we thank you for all your many blessings that you have already bestowed down upon us. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask you to continue to lead and guide us in a way we pleasing in your sight. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds that we may be receptive to your holy word. Now, Heavenly Master, we pray for the sick all over the land. We pray for families who have lost a loved one and their heads are bowed down in sorrow. We pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. Ask you to touch them before it ever lasts too late for them. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask you to build us up where we are torn down and problems on every lean side. Give us more determination to run this race that is set before us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for you as worthy. We thank you, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our lesson today is Israel reject God as king. And our lesson outline, number one, is the background of the king, 1 Samuel 9, 1 through the second verse. The second is the presentation of the king, 1 Samuel 10, 17 through the 24th verses. And then the last outline is the beginning of the kingdom, 1 Samuel 10, 25 through the 26 verses. Last week lesson of backsliding people, the people of Israel repeatedly went through cycles of sin, distress, repentance, deliverance, and sin from generation to generation throughout the period of the judges. However, Israel did not learn anything of value from the period of the judges because they began asking Samuel for a king like those of the surrounding nations. Samuel was reluctant to grant their request, whereas he took this as a rejection of his long years of godly service on behalf of the people. Samuel was also aware of the evil that went along with the kingship. However, the Lord helped Samuel to see the will issue. Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. We need to be very careful about what we ask of God. 
Whereas we must consider what would happen if we get what we ask. Many times what we want is a sorry substitute for what we would have received if we had first sought the will of God. Our first outline is the background of the king, which is coming from 1 Samuel 9, the first and the second verse. Number one. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zerah, the son of Bacharach, the son of Alphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. This verse gives us a genealogy of Saul who became Israel king. The process of selection is not completely described by the scripture text, but it is obvious that God was directing the selection process. Saul was the son of Kish, a wealthy man who had power and substance from the tri tribe of Benjamin, which was the smallest tribe in Israel. In the text, the line of Saul started with Aphiah, then Bacharach, then Zerah, then Abiel, then Kish, and finally Saul. Saul was in many respects better than any of the other young men of Israel, whereas Saul came from a prestigious family and was born to wealth and influence. However, Kish's ancestors was undistinguished men, and their hometown of Gibeah did not have a good name. Then the last verse is outline number two. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulder and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Saul had several admirable qualities that made him fit to be king of Israel during this period in his history. Saul was noted for both his family and his appearance, where he was a tall man of attractiveness appearance, which led to his quick accepted by the people. His physical appearance set him apart from others, for he was goodly, and from his shoulder and up were taller than the rest of the people. Saul stood tall, head and shoulder taller than anyone else. Saul looked like a great king, whereas his being king over Israel was all about image and appearance, Saul was the man. His stature and physique impressed all who saw him. The name Saul means ask of God. Whereas God asked for a king and Saul was indeed the one asked of God. God provided a man who came close to fulfilling their ideal of a king. Saul was an unlikely candidate in many ways, but he was God's choice for this time in Israel history. We often want leaders who outwardly appear impressive, but God judge, judges based on the heart. God arranged for Samuel to meet Saul and to recognize him as God anointed one to reign as king of Israel, whereas Saul was anointed by Samuel in a private ceremony. And that's in our first line, the background of the king. And our second outline is presentation of the king, which is coming from 1 Samuel 10, the 17 through the 24th verse. And number 17, and Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mishpah. <clears throat> Samuel and Saul was brought together while Saul was searching for his father's lost donkey. Whereas Samuel told Saul that the donkey had been found, but also told him that he had been appointed king. Samuel anointed Saul and told him that he would be given three signs from God by which he would have his appointment confirmed, after which Saul returned home. All the signs came to pass, and Saul prophesied with the company of prophets. God prepared Saul for the role of king from the inside out by giving him another heart. It was also essential that Israel have God's choice confirmed to them as well, whereas Samuel assembled the people at Mishpah to announce the appointment of a king. Before making the actual announcement, Samuel once again reminded the people that that demand for a king was a rejection of the God who brought them out of Egypt and, to, and into the promised land. 
even with the king, Israel was still in a covenant agreement with God. And he expected them to follow his commands, whereas Samuel would continue to intercede for Israel to be faithful to the Lord. In number 18, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of all kingdoms and of them that oppress you. God used Samuel to remind them of what they was giving up, whereas God had been exactly what the people needed. Thou deliver them and thou defend them. God had brought Israel out of Egypt delivering them out of the hands of the Egyptian and their cruel, cruel taskmaster. He also told them how God had delivered them from all the kingdom during their travel between Egypt and Canaan. The Amalekite, Edomites, Moabites, as well as the Amorite king, Shion, and all east of Jordan. God also delivered them from those who oppressed them during the time of the judges. All this time, the Lord alone was their king, and he graciously rescued them. Remembering God's wondrous deeds of the past can help in facing the future. What more could they possibly want? God repeatedly extended mercy to Israel, not because of who they was, but because of who he is. In number 19, and you have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulation, and you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. God reminded Israel that he was still more than qualified to be thy king, and their rejection of him was all because of them and not because of the Lord. God had delivered his people time and time again. However, he was being pushed aside by the desire of a childish people to have a king so they could be like all the other nations. God is always disappointed when his people want to be more like worldly people. Instead of recognizing their spiritual condition as the cause of their adversities, they blame their problem on the fact that they had no person to lead them against that Adversities. Adversities. They define their problem as an earthly one, and instead of thanking God for rescuing them in time of trouble, they sought a human solution to solve their problem. Israel was shown how their rejection of our Lord, Lord God made no sense for them to reject the one who had saved them from all their adversity and their tribulation. After the rebuke of the Israelites, Samson now tell the people to present themselves by their tribes and clan before the Lord in order to proceed with the process of identifying their king. Then number 20. And when Samuel had caused all the tribe of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. We do not know the exact process of selection used by Samuel. However, we do know that God guided the process by a divine divinely directed process of casting lots, which was a common practice among ancient people in making decisions. Instead of holding an election, the choice was left to one wise man under the guidance of God. All the tribe of Israel came near, whereas the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. In number 21, when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by that family, the family of Mocker, was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken, and when they saw him, he could not be found. When the tribe of Benjamin came near by their family, the family of Mocker was chosen, and Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. However, when they looked for Saul, he was nowhere to be found. Saul was already the anointed king over Israel, but however, God did this to show the whole nation that Saul was the right man where he showed that God chose Saul and not any other man. Saul did not become king because of the choosing by Lot, but he was chosen king because of God's word to the prophet Samuel. Therefore, the chosen by Lot simply confirmed the word of the Lord through Samuel. 
when Saul was selected, they could not find him because he was hiding among the baggage. Then number 22, therefore they inquired of the Lord Father, if the man shall yet come thither, and the Lord answer, behold, he has hid himself among the stone. Since Saul could not be found, the people involved in selection inquired of the Lord Father in order to be sure of the process. They asked of the Lord whether the man had come here yet. God reassured them of his choice by telling them that their king was hiding among the baggage. What is the explanation of Saul's behavior to why he was hiding among the baggage instead of being there to accept the kingship which he had already been anointed. After first being anointed, Saul, he returned home, not even telling his family what had happened. By hiding among the baggage, Saul showed embarrassment and humility, whereas it appeared that he was not looking forward to be in front of the nation. However, Saul was not made king because of his personal ambition or to gratify a desire for the limelight. Modesty might have caused Saul to run from any public explosion, whereas his hiding may have exposed a weakness, the fear of taking responsibility and decisiveness. Whereas Saul <clears throat> probably did not see himself as having kingly quality at all. God's servants do not always step forward immediately to assume their position of leadership in his kingdom. Then number 23. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any other people from his shoulder and upward. They finally found Saul and he was taken before Samuel and publicly anointed as a new king whom the Lord had chosen. The physical description of Saul showed that he was exactly what the people wanted, standing head and shoulder over all of them, a king that looked good to the other nations, whereas God gave them the king that they wanted. And the weakness he had was hidden on a flawless physical appearance. Physical stature is usually an impressive feature in a man but it indicates nothing about intellect or spiritual maturity. Then the last verse is outlined number 24. And Saul said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Samuel spoke and assured the people that Saul was God's chosen servant to ring as their king. He wanted the nation to see the king, whereas according to what they could see, he was a great king. Samuel pointed out that there is no one like Saul among all the people, whereas knowing that God had chosen him to be king, Samuel also was impressed by Saul's appearance. Spun by Saul's impressive stature and Samuel's combination, the people responded with enthusiasm, shout. God save the king. And that in our second outline, the presentation of the king. And our last outline is the beginning of the kingdom, which is coming from 1 Samuel 10, 25, and through the 26th verse. Number 25. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the, people, the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. God and not means decide the manner of kingdom, including the rights and duty of leaders. God gave Samuel the stature by which Israel would live under a king, whereas Samuel described and taught them God's guideline for both rulers and subjects, verbally and then wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord, which is evidence of the importance of this being placed before the Lord. Samuel then sent the people to their homes. And then our last verse, number 26, And Saul also went home to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts 
God had touched. Since there was no palace at this time, Saul also went home to Gibeah. Saul need, needed support and encouragement, whereas this came from a band of men who chose to remain with their new king because God had touched their hearts. Several valiant men attached themselves to Saul and accompanied him to his home in Gibeah. Not everyone was solidly behind the new king. However, Saul wisely held his peace in front of those rebels who despised him. The Israelite had exchanged a divine master for a human monarch. And even though they suffered because of that choice, they would still experience the faithfulness of God. And this brings us down to our devotional reading, which is coming from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, and 1 through the 13th verse. Beginning with the first verse. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? from ringing over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and gold, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a helper with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him, him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peacefully, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they was come that he looked on Eliba and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abadam and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by and he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen thee. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sin and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and rhythm of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And then our last verse. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Saul, he recognized his inability to fulfill this role as king, which might have been his strongest qualification for the job, if only he had been determined to rely on on God's wisdom and strength. When he enjoyed success, his eyes was on himself, and he took the credit instead of giving God the glory. Later on, Saul seemed to begin to think that he was king because he deserved to be, which was the beginning of his downfall. In later years, God rejected Saul as king, and God had Samuel anoint someone else as king over Israel. The first king of Israel was anointed for the people, whereas this king would be anointed for the Lord. Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse, the best one he might, where he would find the next king among his sons, not the seven older son, but the youngest, David, the sheep keeper. The spirit of the Lord came upon David when he was anointed. 
However, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit troubled him. True humility looked to God and not to self, whereas we must remain dependent on him and credit him fully with any success he enables us to have. Today, Christians have the Holy Spirit within us, and Jesus in heaven intercede for us to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. And this is our lesson for today on next Sunday, October 29th. Our lesson will be Joshua Final Exhortation, which is coming from Joshua 24, chapter, the first verse, and then the 14th through the 24th verses. And our devotional reading is coming from Joshua, the 24th chapter, the second through the 13th verses. Our virtual telecast Sunday school lesson is broadcast at 8 o'clock a.m., on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook and YouTube page. And our sanctuary Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Our sanctuary Sunday morning worship today will be starting at 11 o'clock a.m. It will be broadcast live on Facebook on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Our Wednesday night Bible study is live on Facebook at 6 o'clock p.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Both broadcasts are available later on YouTube on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill channel. And today we're having a special day at the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill. We are celebrating 20 years of pastoral uh, anniversary celebration at 11 o'clock a.m. Our guest speaker will be Pastor Leroy Finch and our guest church will be the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, Here's once again that we call upon your most holy and your righteous name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our hearts, realizing that we have so much to be thankful for, Lord. We thank you for life as well with us as it is, Father. You've been so good to us. And we can't do nothing but say thank you, Father. Now, Heavenly Master, we thank you for keeping us where our dangers all around us. You didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. And we thank you, Father, for just allowing our golden moments to run down to this present time. Now, Heavenly Master, we stop to give you all the honor. We give you all the glory for you is worthy. We thank you, O oh, Heavenly Master, for all what you have done for us, for you have brought us from a mighty long way. We thank you, Father, for just opening doors for us and making ways out of no way. Now, Heavenly Master, we call upon your holy name, asking you to look down upon the sea. Ask you to comfort families whose heads are bowed down in sorrow. And we pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. Strengthen us where we might be weak, that we might be able to run this race that is set before us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for you is worthy. And we thank you. We ask these blessings, our blessing, in the dollar name of Jesus. Amen. We want to thank you once again for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. We want to Pray that you have a good rest of the day. Until we meet again on next Sunday, we pray that you have a good rest of the week. May the Lord continue to bless you and to keep you in his love and care. Amen.